You will now be interpreting in Mr. Barstow's 12th grade world history class. The students are studying about the effects of World War II on the Soviet Union. All right. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, the, uh, the end of World War II came. Probably the Soviet Union was, without a doubt, the most strongly uh, impacted of all the, the nations or, or, or countries involved. Soviet Union and then Russia. And to give you an idea, uh, and these are figures that were released by the Soviet Union at the end of World War II to the United Nations. Since these were released in 1945, uh, most people say they've been doctored. And I'll explain what I mean by doctored in a little bit. Uh, this, like I said, was reported by the Soviets during what they called World War II, the Great Patriotic War, between 20 and 30 million dead. Uh, that would be mainly civilian, not all military, obviously. Total or partial destruction of 1,700 towns, 70,000 villages. There again, the distinction between town and village would be a demographic distinction, like probably population, anything under 2,000 would be a village, anything over 2,000 would be a town, so that's what that refers to. Six million buildings, 84,000 schools, 43,000 libraries, 31,000 factories, 1,300 bridges, uh, 137 tractors, 49,000 combines, 7 million horses, 17 million cattle, 20, 20 million hogs, and 27, and I just said three sheep, uh, just for the heck of it. Uh, now, reactions to that. Not funny if you're a sheep. Yeah, I wouldn't be laughing if I was a sheep, I know. But what, just initial reaction to those numbers. Sincerely aghast. Sincerely aghast? Uh, no, like I said, no other country, with the possible exception of Germany, uh, mainly because of the depth of penetration of the, of the Wehrmacht. I mean, they got to Leningrad, they got within 15 kilometers of Moscow. In the south of Russia, it was even further. And also the enmity and the acrimony that existed between the Soviets and the Germans. They hated each other. That hatred and loathing had gone back, well, even when you saw it yesterday in Catherine's film, the battle on the ice. And so the war on the Eastern Front was, was a total war. It was incredibly vicious. Uh, there was no humanity there. There was no Geneva. Uh, if you were a prisoner, you were dead. Yeah, Ben? If the Soviets followed the scorched earth policy, they probably destroyed a lot of their own stuff. OK, good question. Take it into the thing is, if, if the Soviets followed a scorched earth policy, in other words, as they pulled back from, from, the, uh, from the Germans, and they mentioned it yesterday, they blew up dams, they blew up buildings. So a lot of this damage is not necessarily attributed to, to the Wehrmacht and the German forces. The Soviets did it themselves. I'm sure what they would say is whether you blow up a bridge yourself is to prevent the Germans from advancing before they blow it up. The point is the bridge is gone. Uh, one thing that a lot of people in the United States don't pay too much attention to is this, uh, the number of livestock that was lost. Uh, in an agrarian society where probably still 60% of the people relied on producing the food themselves and their farms and stuff, uh, man, a lot of people were starving. There. I mean, famine, food shortage was massive. Yeah. Russia's factories and things were behind the times then. And then, with the war destroying stuff, they're still behind. Still there today. If you, if you want to see the effects of World War II on the Soviet Union, go to Russia today. Boris Yeltsin will still tell you a lot of his problems don't result from what's occurred in the last two or three years, but what happened from 1939 to 1945. Or if you really were pessimist, you should go all the way back uh, to World War I. These people have had, not had a chance to catch their breath, except for the brief period during the 1950s. One thing that the, that the Russians did, and the United States stood by and let them, was they had wholesale, uh, should I say, 
uh, confiscation of industrial might in Czechoslovakia, Germany, Poland. They loaded whole factories, whole cities, heavy industry onto Russian uh, trains and shipped it back and started their own factory. So they shredded Eastern Germany and Eastern Europe. Uh, they looted it effectively. Now, I'm sure the Russians say, hey, we didn't loot it. We're just taking back what you, know, what you guys destroyed. And it did help to a certain extent. But it's still, you're talking about an infrastructure here that you just cannot recreate uh, overnight. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, to answer your question, they didn't see that. Obviously, the, the, the Czechs had been taken over uh, when, when, when Hitler marked them in the Sudetenland. He went in there because there were Germans along the border. So, yes, he suppressed the Czechs. But the Russians, I don't think, ever saw the Czechs, or maybe the Slovaks, if they were, were Slavic. Uh, but the Poles, even though they were Slavic, they didn't feel any special kindred to them. It was still Russian for Russians, and you guys can. Can, uh, can uh, you know, finish on the seconds. So no, Eastern Europe, and the relationship between Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union, even after World War II, is, is not a partnership, right? It is you know, a very subservient one, even to the point in the eight, uh, 1980s uh, when there would be like, a, the Russians would take grain from Hungary and send back really you know, poor quality gas terrible quid pro quo. Uh, but there again, don't like it, try and rebel from us. So that relationship between Eastern Germany and, and part of Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union is going to go on now. Uh, major problem with the Soviet Union, and I showed that to you, Katie, when I read you the, the worst thing about communism is you have to live with all these people you don't know. Uh, all the houses that were destroyed, they still have a major housing shortage in the Soviet Union. Russia. Yeah. So I'm wondering, for like the cattle, what percentage of all the Soviets' cattle were destroyed? Okay, as far as percentages, you know, so total cattle population, uh, it's a good question. I would say probably anywhere from 35 to 40 percent. Okay, and that and that's sort of a bulk. Yeah, go ahead, Ian. That's going to be a more important figure relative to the human population at the time. You know, there again, pits, the cattle where they were milk producing or were producing from meat. Most cattle at this time were used for, for not so much for uh, uh, meat, which was rare. Even today, at the Commonwealth, in the States, if you had meat once a, once a week, which was rare, and then it's some kind of sausage, and maybe some chicken. So you won't have beef. So the beast of burden was very important. Plowing still. In the, in the 1940s, they were using cattle to pull their, their stuff. Hogs, once again, was important for butchering, and there again, sheep. There again, it was used for wool, uh, it was used for a number of items, not so much for, uh, for you know, killing for, for uh, in other words, they were seen as a replenishable resource, not necessarily for the killing. But this, these things, all right, can be rebuilt, can be replaced, but probably the, the biggest loss, and there again, in any war, is, and you may not be able to see this too well, this is out of your book, and this is uh, Soviet war losses. And what it is, it, is, is a, it looks at the, the population. This is Soviet war losses in World War II were about 20 million. That has been upwardly revised to around 35 million now. Because we found out about three years ago that the Soviets lied about the number of people dying during World War II. Some people in the United States said they're exaggerating those numbers, not that many people died. As it turns out, they were downplaying it. They lied. There were actually more people killed. Why? Go ahead. Both of you are fairly correct. Powerful. They knew what they were doing. But what was their biggest fear in 1945? They didn't want the world to know that their troops were wiped out. There were elements in the, in, in the uh, American Army, General George Patton, that really didn't want to stop German. He realized that the Soviet Union was going to be our opponent after World War II. He would have liked to have kept right on marching to Moscow. He knew that he could. Unfortunately, peace mongers like Eisenhower and people like that wanted to get out and get our boys home and start building suburbs as quickly as possible. Uh, and start the baby boomers from coming out. Just 
dead. Uh, start those people coming back. And so they were scared to death that they were going to be invaded again. So they were making loud noises. Now, I'm not that many people were killed. Now, going on with this, about one in ten people died during the war. On the following charts, compare the number of people who were 20 in 1939 and those who were 40 in 1959. All right? So if you look at 20, 1939, uh, what do you got here? About 15.7 million. And then uh, we're 50 in 19, 1959, right, right there. Okay? So you see a discrepancy of about 6 million. What demographers call that is an echo effect. All echo effect is means if my father would have been killed during World War II, I would have not have been here. So not only do you kill the actual people at the time, demographically you prevent people from existing at another time. And you see that you see that in Russia a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you you know statistics can be very misleading, but if you start looking here, uh, this is fairly compelling. Uh, and I'll be very honest with you, I think I've mentioned this before. It is visually, it's, it's there. If you walk the street of, of places like St. Petersburg or Leningrad, uh, you can tell there are more women. Now, I was cognizant of the fact, so I told my wife one time we got off the metro and we were coming up, I said, we were walking along the Nevsky Prospect. And I said, look, let's just see. If you really sense there are a lot more women. So we started counting. And we would come... Uh, you know, sometimes, like the halls of Lincoln High, you'd come to a period of, boy, not many old men at all, and tons of old women. Part of that has to do with World War II, and part of it has to do with the incredible alcoholism and, and, and tobacco smoking of, of Russian males, so they don't live to, to be age 60. Yeah? So, like, weren't there women fighting, too? The question was, weren't there more women fighting, too? And compared to any other power, Western or, or uh, Axis power, uh, yes, there were more women. They just didn't have near the figures. Plus, the Germans were sexist. Uh, when it came to uh, taking a reprisal on villages, they would shoot men, women, and children, but more than likely they would shoot men, not so much women. The women, if they were a prime aid, were raped. Uh, and they alluded to that yesterday in the film. Uh, but there again, when the Soviets returned to Germany, they, they, paid, they paid rape for rape. Uh, it was an incredibly brutal war. And you read about the uh, what's going on in Serbia right now with the rape squads that actually go into certain villages and, and try to impregnate Croatian women and stuff. You see, oh, that's so strange. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, unfortunately, it's a part of European history that you can find over and over again. And you can look at different racial stock within Russia itself. In Mongol and see that, that that's been a common, common result of a lot of wars. All right. Uh, I don't know how I could not overplay the impact of, of the great patriotic war on the Russians. Uh, it's affected their literature. It's affected, it's affected uh, their music, their poetry, uh, every aspect of their lives. Uh, to us, World War II was John Wayne, uh, late night movies, Marines, uh, happy endings. 